In the process of photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. Photosynthesis would not be possible without chlorophyll. But did you know that two other types of plant pigments also aid in photosynthesis? In this lab, we will examine the process of photosynthesis and the different types of pigments present in plant leaves. It is not possible to see photosynthesis at work because it happens on a molecular level, but we can see the effects of photosynthesis in this experiment. To demonstrate that photosynthesis produces oxygen, we need some fresh green leaves. For this experiment, we will use baby spinach leaves. With a hole punch, we punch tiny round pieces called chads from the leaves. We need 20 chads for this experiment. We also need two beakers, each containing a 2% sodium bicarbonate solution. If we drop a chad into the solution, it will float. This is because some air is trapped in the layers of the leaves. We need to force the air out of the chads using a syringe. If we hold the tip of the syringe closed and pull out slightly on the plunger, we create a partial vacuum inside the syringe. With a partial vacuum inside the syringe, the air pressure inside the barrel is much less than the pressure outside the barrel. When we release the plunger, the outside pressure forces the plunger back to its former position. Now, we will remove the plunger from a syringe and dump 10 chads into the barrel. Next, we insert the plunger and force as much air as possible out of the syringe by depressing the plunger almost to the bottom of the barrel. We need to draw 10 milliliters of the sodium bicarbonate solution into the syringe from one of the beakers. Notice that the chads are floating at the top of the solution. If you recall, they are floating because air is trapped in the layers of the leaves. By closing the tip of the syringe and pooling on the plunger, we create a partial vacuum between the surface of the solution and the end of the plunger. Air trapped in the chads will flow into the partial vacuum. After pulling on the plunger, we hold it in that position for 10 seconds. Then, while still holding the tip of the syringe closed, we slowly release the plunger to its former position. Now where are the chads? If all the chads have fallen to the bottom of the solution, we have successfully drawn out all the air. If not, we need to repeat the process. If any chads are sticking to the sides of the barrel, we can dislodge them by tapping on the barrel. Carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis. Since the chads are submerged, they are unable to get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The sodium bicarbonate solution will provide the chads with a source of carbon dioxide. While still holding the tip of the syringe closed, we depress the plunger to force some of the sodium bicarbonate solution into the leaf chads. This will ensure the chads get a sufficient supply of carbon dioxide. Now, we are ready to dump the chads into one of the beakers containing the sodium bicarbonate solution. This group of chads will become our control group. Our control group will be placed in a dark enclosure. Without light, photosynthesis cannot occur. We will follow the same steps to prepare the remaining 10 chads. This group will become our test group. We place our test group under a set of lamps. The light from the lamps should promote photosynthesis in the chads. As oxygen bubbles form inside the chads, they will become buoyant and float. This will take several minutes, so we will leave the camera running and speed up the action. All the chads are floating, proving that oxygen was formed by photosynthesis. Now let's look at our control group. Notice that all the chads are still at the bottom of the beaker. Since this group was not exposed to light, Photosynthesis did not take place, and no oxygen was produced. 
This experiment demonstrated that light acted on the chads in the test group to produce oxygen. Photosynthesis would not be possible without a pigment called chlorophyll A, but it is not the only pigment used by plants. In our next experiment, we will examine several types of pigments used by plants. Chlorophyll A is the primary pigment in a green leaf, but another pigment called chlorophyll B is also used for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll B is a yellow-green pigment. Six types of chlorophyll exist in nature, but chlorophyll A and B are the most common. Hundreds of other pigments are grouped together in a class called carotenoids. Carotenoids consist of yellow, orange, and red pigments. One common carotenoid is beta-carotene, which is found in carrots. Beta-carotene is converted to vitamin A in the body. Why does a plant need more pigments than just chlorophyll A? Because there is more than one color of light. White light is actually a combination of many different colors of light. Objects that appear green to our eyes reflect green light and absorb all other colors. Chlorophyll A reflects green light but absorbs all other colors. Chlorophyll B reflects yellow-green light, but absorbs other colors. Chlorophyll B makes a pair appear yellow-green. Carotenoids reflect red, orange, or yellow light, but absorb other colors, including green. Carotenoids are the pigments that make carrots orange and apples red. To take advantage of all the colors of the spectrum, plants use chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. We will use a process known as thin line chromatography to separate the mixture of pigments in a green leaf. Using a mortar and pestle, we smash up some spinach leaves and mix them with a solution of calcium carbonate and acetone to draw the mixture of pigments out of the leaf. Let the content stand for five minutes. After five minutes, we strain the contents to separate the leaf pieces from the pigments. Next, we take a thin strip, known as a chromatography plate. With a pencil, we make a line near the bottom of the plate. This is the origin line. Then, we place several drops of the mixture on the origin line. We let the plate dry for four minutes. After four minutes, we place the chromatography plate in a vial containing a small amount of an organic solvent called isopropanol. The plate will act like a wick to draw the solvent to the top of the plate. As the solvent reaches the line of origin, it will dissolve the pigment and separate the mixture into some of its component pigments. Some pigments will travel quickly up the plate, but other pigments will travel more slowly. After about 45 minutes, we can see three lines of color on the chromatography plate. The green line was made by the chlorophyll A. The first yellow line was made by the chlorophyll B. The second yellow line was made by carotenoids. By using chromatography, we have separated the plant pigment mixture into its three component pigments. In our next two labs, we will be working with a microscope as we explore the world of cytology and microbiology. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.